I'm Tom, and uh, welcome to my talk, Sluicing Scripts. Now, if you didn't know, uh, a sluice box is a thing used to filter gold and other precious metals out of running water. Uh, but as you might know, uh, the web pretty much runs on JavaScript, uh, and it looks a bit like this. Oh, complicated syntax, braces and quotes all over the place, generally a little bit of a mess, uh, and it has a little bit of a reputation for being that way. Now, you can sometimes find some pretty juicy stuff buried deep in JavaScript sometimes, like secrets and API keys, or, or in this case, uh, an HTTP basic authorization header that you know, might let you have access to something interesting. Um, you can also find things that are much less juicy, but still very useful, like uh, maybe parameters you might not otherwise know about, like this show diagnostics parameter that's uh, buried in a conditional. Or also like paths. So if we want to extract these paths from this code example uh, into a word list, well, we have a few options. We could copy and paste them, uh, but I think, you know, if we're honest, no one's really got time for that. There are five uh, in this example, but there could be 500. Now, you could use grep and a regular expression to extract these strings. So um, here we have a regular expression uh, which matches a single quote, anything that's not a single quote, and one or more times, uh, and then a closing uh, single quote. Uh, well, it gets kind of tricky when there's quotes being used, or worse, escaped quotes in the middle of strings. And there might be dozens or even hundreds of other strings in the file that you really want to ignore. And if you notice, that second line of output is kind of screwed up. Uh, and that's because of that problem. There was a, a quote, a single quote, in the middle of a double-quoted string that messed up our regular expression. So uh, I want to tell you about a different way to pull stuff out of JavaScript. Uh, and as an example, uh, let's try and get this string, uh, hello, Nahamcon. Now, I'll run this command, and uh, it might not make a whole lot of sense to you right now, uh, but the important part is it works. We got that string out, uh, and if there had been an embedded quote in that string, uh, it still would have worked. So uh, I used a tool called JSLUCE to do that, uh, that I wrote, and uh, it's a tool for pulling stuff out of JavaScript files. Uh, you can find it on GitHub, and it has modes for finding URLs, it has a mode for finding secrets with uh, patterns that you specify, uh, but right now I really want to talk about the query mode, which is something I think even people who've used JSLUCE in the past might not have used. Now, JSLUCE uses a library called TreeSitter uh, to parse and understand the structure of JavaScript, uh, and that's so it can avoid the pitfalls associated with using regular expressions. So things like different types of quotes and escape characters and so on kind of become a non-issue when you use a library like TreeSitter to parse JavaScript into uh, a syntax tree. Now, TreeSitter has a query language that you can use to target specific things like strings or identifiers in specific contexts, like where those strings are arguments to particular functions or where they're being assigned to particular variables. So as a slightly more complicated example, uh, let's try and just get the second string from this JavaScript code. We want to ignore the other ones. So we could start by running the same command that we ran last time to get one string. But you'll note that we get all three strings back. Um, now, that query we're running consists of a type of thing we're looking for, a string. Uh, that's the bit at the start of the brackets. Uh, and a name for that thing. Uh, and this is what TreeSitter calls capturing a node. Uh, and if we don't give that name, we won't actually see anything in the output because JSLUS doesn't know uh, that that's the thing that you want to capture. So uh, important to remember that part. But either way, we're getting all three strings, and that's not what we want. Now, to help us write a better query, uh, we first want to take a look at how JSLU sees the structure of the code uh, using the tree mode. So the tree mode prints a textual representation of the JavaScript syntax tree. Uh, and of particular interest to us is that there's an identifier with the value 2 uh, right next to the string that we want to capture. So at the top level, we have a program. Within that is a variable declaration. Uh, within that is a variable declarator. Uh, and that has two fields, name and the value. The name is the identifier, 2 in this case. And the value is the type string and has the value the second. That's the bit that we're looking for. So we might write a query like this to look for that specific situation. So nodes in tree queries that are next to each other like this are um, 
considered siblings, so to speak. Um, so we're looking for an identifier, uh, which we're calling at ID. Uh, those uh, names always have to start with an at character, by the way. That's next to, or a sibling of, a string, and we're calling that at val. Uh, this query, though, will not actually fix things. Uh, it will still match all three strings in the code. Uh, but the good news is, uh, tree setter queries also have a concept of predicates, or maybe you could call them filters or conditionals that will only match code that meets the condition specified. So we can use the EQ predicate to only match situations where the identifier part is equal to the word to. Uh, and that will find the variable that we're looking for. There are other predicates you can use as well, like not and match, which supports regular expressions. Uh, but EQ is just about the simplest of them. And that has to come after the nodes in the query. So uh, let's try it out. So. Um, worked, uh, which is good. Uh, you might notice something interesting. Uh, JSON's actually returned some JSON, a J JSON object, uh, which I piped into JQ to format it, give it some colors, make it stand out. Now, when there's more than one named thing in the query, more than one node that is captured, uh, that happens automatically. And uh, that turns out to be pretty useful by itself. So it's pretty common to see code like this in JavaScript. It's sort of JSON shaped. JSON is mostly a subset of JavaScript, after all, but you know it's not anything you could pass directly to tools like JQ or Gron for further processing. Uh, and sometimes you can get really rather a lot uh, of data formatted like this in JavaScript files that you would really like to do something with, uh, and that can be very difficult. Luckily for us, uh, the query mode always outputs valid JSON. Uh, and that means you can take objects or arrays and so on from JavaScript code and convert them to something you can easily process with other tools. Well, Booleans, like true and false, uh, numbers, arrays, and, and null, and so on, are, are all handled correctly. They all get converted to their nearest JSON equivalents. Now, you can't output things like functions and so on that don't make sense within JSON, but uh, if it can be converted reasonably, uh, then JSON does that for you. Uh, and that means you can make a trade-off. You know, you can write a more simple query, uh, like this one that matches any object, uh, uh, because, you know, <laughs> tree serial queries can get kind of verbose uh, and kind of complicated, and it's often a good idea to make that trade-off. Now, JQ does have a little bit of a reputation for being tricky to use as well, but simple queries like this one that extract the items in the paths array uh, aren't too hard to get your head around. Uh, in JQ language, dot is the root object being passed, or the root value, should I say, being passed to it. Uh, paths is the field name, and then the square brackets mean the values uh, of this array. So you can see we have just the paths from that array that was embedded inside an object being outputted, ready to use in uh, a word list or in whatever context that we would like. So on the subject of outputting valid JSON, I think one of the most frustrating things to deal with with JavaScript when you're trying to use it to mine data uh, is many different escape sequences that are possible in JavaScript but aren't valid in JSON. So you have uh, octal, you have backslash x, uh, slash u with curly brackets and without, and, and so on and so forth. JSON doesn't support all of those. Uh, they're not valid. Uh, and that means you can't pass strings straight to tools like JQ or uh, sometimes any other tools. Uh, and it's a real pain to adapt them. So I, I took special care to make sure JSON supports and converts all of them when parsing strings so that they're converted to JSON-friendly alternatives. I actually ended up writing my own uh, string parser to do that, so um, let me know if you find any bugs. Now, one place you might forget to look for juicy stuff in JavaScript code is comments, because comments are kind of not code by definition, but you know it's a pretty common for old bits of code to be commented out. And sometimes I might tell you about older or possibly vulnerable parts of an application. You know, maybe things that were accidentally left in while a developer was debugging it, like this uh, debug equals true parameter here. That's probably something you want to know about. Now, comments are just nodes in the syntax tree like anything else in JavaScript. The parser has to be able to understand them so it can ignore them. Uh, and that means they can be extracted with a query. So, you know, here there's only a few small bits of code, and you could easily look at these manually. 
Um, but if you imagine you were looking at many more files, there was many more results that could easily uh, fit on a slide, you might have a, a little bit more of a problem. So uh, one thing we can do uh, is use the dash dash raw input flag that JSUS has to accept JavaScript on standard input. And what that means for us is that we can run a query on one bit of code to extract, in this case, comments, um, use something like said to remove the double slashes at the beginning of each line, and then pipe the result back into JSUS for further processing. I think there's a really a lot of power with that technique um, and it means, again, this is another way that you can write two simple queries rather than one complicated query, which uh, might uh, lower the cognitive overhead somewhat. Now, when I'm thinking of word lists, I'm mostly thinking of paths. Uh, that might be because uh, maybe I'm a, a, a little bit old school, or maybe just old, um, but, you know, especially in modern web applications that run off APIs and things, Guessing parameters can be just as, if, if not more, fruitful than guessing paths. Well, parameters are often highly specific to the application in question. You know, the, one application might have a parameter name that appears nowhere else on the web. Uh, and I think that means that custom word lists are kind of a must. Uh, and also, object keys from the JavaScript source can be a really great source of that data. You know, here we have an object being posted to an API endpoint, and we might want to use those uh, object keys in a word list for guessing parameters in other parts of the application. Now, uh, we can uh, extract those keys pretty easily with JSLUS. Uh, there's two parts of this query worth noting. Uh, so firstly, we use the field name key to specify exactly which part of the key value pair we're interested in. Uh, and we also used underscore as a wildcard to mean any type. Now, object keys can be both strings or bare identifiers, you know, the kind without quotes. And we really want to capture both for use in our word list. Um, you might also notice we're matching the method and body keys uh, from that parent object passed to fetch, as well as those from the uh, object that was being posted to the API. Uh, we may or may not want them, so uh, let's look at a way to uh, not get them. Now, Earlier I said tree sitter queries can get kind of verbose, kind of complicated, uh, and this one's a pretty good example of that, but uh, it's also a good example of the kind of power that these queries provide. This query looks for a call expression where the function being called is json.stringify. Now it uses that uh, predicate uh, eq that we mentioned earlier on to do that. Um, but the other thing that it matches is keys within a pair within an object that are part of the arguments to json.stringify. So this will only match keys that are used in objects passed to that particular function. Now, this is pretty big uh, query. Uh, and one thing I like to do when queries get big, or really any other parameter to a command line tool gets too big, is to put it in a text file uh, and use this dollar brackets less than syntax to read the contents of the file and pass it in as a parameter. That's a, a, a pretty useful bash trick to have uh, under your belt. But uh, you know, this technique of looking for arguments for particular functions can be really useful for extracting things not based just on what they look like or what type they are, but based on where they're used. Uh, and I'm sure with a bit of creative thinking, you could figure out how to use this technique to help find client-side vulnerabilities like DOM XSS, for example. So you might look for uh, variables containing uh, some user-controlled input that are being assigned to document.location, for example, or maybe they're the first argument to window.open. Maybe uh, those things would be useful to you. So I have one last useful thing for you. Uh, you might have been wondering, you know, this is all well and good dealing with JavaScript files, but, you know, JavaScript is often embedded in HTML. How would I deal with that? Uh, and, you know, in my experience, that is the JavaScript most likely to have dynamic elements like environment-specific configuration. Uh, and that can really make it a pretty interesting uh, target. It's almost sort of more likely that it will accidentally include maybe uh, an API key or something. Or maybe, you never know. 
The good news is that JSUS automatically detects and parses HTML to extract inline JavaScript. So you can grab a whole bunch of HTML, a whole bunch of JavaScript using uh, wget or pagefetch or whichever tool you prefer, and you can pass it all in at once without having to distinguish between the two, uh, and everything should just work. So uh, key takeaways then, I think really extract identifiers and, and object keys and strings and things, use those to build target specific word lists. I think that's really one of the key uh, differentiators between um, being able to find you know, every last bit of an application versus only finding the bits of the application that everyone else using the same word list as you is using. Uh, you should use JSUS's tree mode to help you write queries. Writing tree seeder queries is uh, not super easy I, in my experience. It takes a little bit of practice and, and a little bit of trial and error. So you know, using that tree mode to help you figure out exactly what it is in the code that you're looking for is really helpful. You can leverage JQ or Gron or other similar tools to extract things from objects so that your queries stay simple. I think uh, you know, for these one-off ad hoc sort of commands, that's uh, usually the thing that's the lowest cognitive overhead is the best way to do things. And also, sometimes there's interesting things in comments. So here's some links to some more resources. So you can go crazy with these ideas. Uh, you can go install JSUS and, and read the TreeSitter query documentation to really get your head around it uh, and see what you can come up with. And uh, of course, thanks for watching.